We are back in the woods, back in our usual woods, but you know what? I'm thinking we should branch out. There's areas of this woodland we've not yet explored yet, and so there's obviously potential for new campsites, so that's what we're out here to do. So there's a bunch of conifers overhead in the distance. That's going to be our destination between us and them, dense brush. But we don't mind a bit of bushwhacking. So its common name, the cuckoo flower, refers to the arrival of the flowers at the same time as the cuckoo starts to sing. There is a lot of superstition related to the cuckoo flower. People believe this flower brought bad luck, particularly generating thunder and lightning storms. And of course it was also sacred to fairies, so it was never brought inside the house. It was also believed that the cuckoo flower attracts adders. Edible flowers and leaves with the leaves tasting of English mustard or wasabi. And the flowers like cress. unmistakable smell of garlic. So the garlic mustard greens are very nutritious as they contain a substantial amount of vitamins A, C, E, and also some of the B vitamins. In addition, this wild weed contains potassium, calcium, magnesium, selenium, copper, iron, and manganese, as well as omega-3 fatty acids. It's always good when scouting out for a new camp. Keep an eye out for any plants or Whoa. Oh man, I stood up too fast. That's what I was saying. It's always a uh, good idea when scouting a new camp to uh, look for plants or other materials that could potentially help you at your camp. So this plant here, Fryer's Cow, contains high levels of calcium oxalate crystals. But these crystals can be irritating to people's skin and have a sharp feeling like a mouth full of needles if accidentally ingested. So don't eat that. As sun goes in, it no longer feels like summer's come early. So we've reached a bog, it's the final obstacle between us and our destination. And when I'm scouting for a new camp area, it's something like this bog that I look for because the less desirable it is to get to the camp, the less likely it is that people will come strolling through when you're having your siesta. So as with any new camp area, I'm going to walk around the surroundings and I'm going to be looking out for a couple of things. Signs of human life, tracks, litter, and also materials that we could use, wood for shelter building, firewood, plants and such that could assist us while we're out here. Also going to be on the lookout for widow makers.
So this is a welcome addition to the channel. We've got some fat wood and it shouldn't be an issue getting any more of this resin soaked wood from this tree and the surrounding area. So there's no tracks, no litter, plenty of firewood to be had here, plenty of wood for shelter building. This place is a gold mine. So our current location, which will become our campsite, is actually located on a hill. It comes down and there's a flat area and then it goes down some more. So essentially we're overlooking the woodland, which is a good thing. So we have flat ground, we have a good vantage point, the trees around us are healthy. And speaking of the trees, we have trees here that we don't have in our original campsites. This hornbeam, for example, the strongest wood in Europe. As for firewood, it will burn hot and slow. Ideal. They actually used to build yachts out of hornbeam. Not sure if they still do, but the more you know. European larch, a deciduous conifer during winter, this tree will lose its needles. As you can see here from this branch that's actually snapped off, the needles come in bundles. Had a bit more of a walk around and as you can see, we found ourselves a fox den. Still appears to be active. There's a bunch of leaves piled up just here and a bunch of scat on top of that. So what say we try to catch them in action? Not sure if we will. I've noticed that foxes seem to sense IR light, right? Every time I've had a trail camera out there, look straight into it and they go the other way. Upon further study, apparently coyotes and foxes can both see infrared light, myth or not. So one quick thing before we leave here today, just because we haven't seen any signs of human life, no litter or tracks, it doesn't mean that there isn't human life. So in this case, I'm going to hook up another trail camera, leave it out here for a good week, come back, and then after reviewing the footage, if there's no one around, I think we can safely say that not many people will be frequenting this area. So. We'll hook this up and we'll get out of here.